Twelve Monkeys is a 1995 sci-fi mystery film directed by Terry Gilliam. Its plot centers around a convicted criminal named Thomas Cole who is sent back in time to gather information in order to uncover the mystery of how five billion people died from a deadly virus. He and the rest of the world live underground due to the virus being airborne everywhere. He is chosen to return to the past because he's recognized as a good observer and also someone who has a good memory. Twelve Monkeys is quite possibly one of the most confusing yet fascinating films I have ever seen. The general theory that the film poses is that the past is unchangeable. Once something has already happened, it cannot be altered under any circumstances. Even if you go back in time, you just become part of the natural course of history that has actually already happened. Believe me, that sort of makes sense as I go along. The film's very title is a scapegoat and actually has nothing to do with why 5 billion people die, but I'll get to that later. The reason as to why this is an incredibly confusing film is because it constantly contradicts itself to Throughout. As every event takes place, the viewer is left very confused as to how something that is happening for the first time could have already taken place. But just when you think that this story has shot itself in the foot and doesn't even know what it is trying to do, you realise that what is happening actually makes sense. In a bizarre sort of a way. Again, Twelve Monkeys is merely presenting alternate ideas and theories on time travel. The film presents to us that you cannot change the past but you can learn from it and discover things by entering into it. According to to the film, there's no stopping a deadly virus from killing 5 billion people, but there is a way of attempting to figure out a solution for the present day through learning from the past. But what if by attempting to go back in time, you are inadvertently writing history as it became? What if you are causing 5 billion people to die when you are actually trying to prevent it? This film brilliantly confuses its audience and actually makes them think about how all of this could have happened. How can someone cause 5 billion people to die when they actually weren't there to begin with? How did things go wrong the first time when they weren't even there? Well, the theory 12 Monkeys proposes is that our main character Thomas Cole was actually there first. He was always there. Everything can't be altered, and all of these events are in a never-ending and painful loop that doesn't allow for an alternate past, only an alternate future for the present day, which in this film is 2035. <laughs> Do you ever wonder to yourself, why haven't I seen a time traveller? How can time travel be real without any actual proof? There are reasonable theories such as the Mandela effect, but how do we actually know when something that was meant to happen didn't actually happen and thus the outcome was altered? What if the original outcome is actually the altered one? This movie presents to you that a time traveller isn't sent to the past to change it, but rather to cause it. To cause the original past. As Thomas Cole says in the movie, Five billion people died in 1996 and 1997. Almost the entire population of the world. Only about 1% of us survived. Are you going to save us, Mr. Cole? How can I save you? This already happened. I can't save you. Nobody can. Everything that is happening to these characters in the years 1990 and 1996 has, much to their amazement and confusion, actually happened already. So what 12 Monkeys is saying is that Thomas Cole will always go back in time in order to try and uncover clues to trace the path of this deadly virus when in reality he himself returning to the past is the original spark that caused everything to go wrong. There's no first past that doesn't actually have him going back to the past. The viewers are led to believe that him saying this to Jeffrey Goins in 1990 was what planted the idea for everything to go wrong. Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. Wiping out the human race? It's a great idea. It's great. But uh, more of a long-term thing. Um, first, we had to focus on more immediate goals. I didn't say a word about you know what. However, the big twist is that Goins was just a crazy nutjob who formed the 12 Monkeys, an animal rights activist group who released all of the zoo animals into the city and then put posters everywhere which say, we did it, to brag about their mischief and send a message to the people. This is the perfect distraction for the audience and only the most intelligent of film goers on their first viewing of the film would be able to look past what's right in their faces and attempt to figure out what the real cause was of 5 billion people dying.
As you can already tell, this film doesn't hold your hand and walk you through the story. It doesn't reveal in plain sight the obvious villain and protagonist. Nobody in this film is the obvious hero and nobody is the obvious villain. Sure, James Cole is the main character, but he is far from perfect. He literally kills people during the film. Please don't kill me! Don't kill me, please! Please don't kill me, don't kill me! The people who wrote this film were more interested in making the viewers think and think about what is going on here rather than painting an obvious hero's journey as well as a clearly laid out plot that's spoon fed to the audience. This is not that film. This is different. That's why it's so fascinating. By the time the audience is led to believe that Thomas Cole has just inspired Jeffrey Goins to want to kill all humans, the actual reason for 5 billion people dying is already in the process of taking place. The fascination that psychiatrist Catherine Riley takes up in Thomas Cole's character is the actual reason for everything going horribly wrong. Cole appears in the year 1990 by mistake for a brief period and then when held in a room locked up in restraints he disappears without a trace while he's in 1990 he speaks to riley about the world ending and him needing to gather clues to trace the path of the virus that ended up killing everyone in the year 1996 his visit to the year 1990 sparks Catherine riley's interest in people creating a meticulously constructed fantasy world for themselves but more specifically people who believe they are sent from the future to warn everyone about near extinction extinction level events that are set to occur later on. In the space of six years, Riley has researched every well documented account of these people existing throughout history. People that have mental illnesses who claim they have been sent from the future to warn humanity about what's to come. She ends up writing a book about this and presenting her research to the people. One of the audience members is a man named Dr. Peters. This guy is in fact the real lunatic of the film. He's a doomsday nut that's obsessed with unleashing hell on the world and being the cause of a deadly virus that wipes out almost all of humanity. Although his intention was to kill everybody. The only reason why he's obsessed with this? Well, you guessed it, Catherine Riley's research on the human mind's dive into insanity for the purpose of science. She was obviously already a psychiatrist when Cole first visited the past. However, his particular case of what she thought was insanity sparked her fascination in this type of mental illness, and thus the cause and effect of all the events that later unfold becomes crystal clear. So we the audience now realise it's Thomas Cole and the scientist's fault for sending him back in time to merely try and discover the path of the virus, but they've already discovered the path of the virus because they are the path of the virus and everything is forever stuck in this loop because it has, as the movie presents, already happened. The best examples in this film of how the past is unchanged are the phone calls pieced together in the present which are left from the past by Riley and Cole. Catherine Riley's phone call she makes to the number the scientists told Cole to call was shown at the beginning of the film, before Cole is even sent back in time to cause everything. So even despite in the audience's mind nothing has gone wrong yet because they haven't sent Cole back, everything has actually already gone wrong and there is no way of changing it. Nobody here knows what they are actually doing because it is the natural course of events that are taking place. It is going to happen no matter what. You cannot change the past. You can only learn from it. Bravo, Edmund. Bravo. That's a film analysis for another day. The ending of 12 Monkeys demonstrates this theory brilliantly as the scientist meets up with the man who spreads the virus after Thomas Cole's phone call from the airport is traced and the timeline of all the events is pieced together. Even though the scientist finds him on the plane and they meet up, there is no telling the audience that everything is going to be okay and a cure will be discovered now that the scientist has found the man who caused the virus. This is just simply the course of time taking place as it has. The past events from this scene onwards is unknown to the viewers, only the present and the 
future can now be altered, and it's up to us what we want to do with it. Do we learn from the past to ensure a better future, or do we repeat our mistakes? Nobody knows because it hasn't happened yet. That's the beauty of the future as opposed to an unchangeable past. Just because Thomas Cole's life and the terrible fate he meets is just stuck in a constant loop and cannot be altered, it doesn't mean the future is also unchangeable. Your future hasn't been written yet, so make it a good one. Both of you. Your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. Both of you. Like the past. The movie never changes. It can't change, but every time you see it, it seems different because you are different. Trying to figure out 12 Monkeys is what makes the film so special and so pure. Throughout this film analysis, I've probably put together the puzzle incorrectly and fit pieces in places they weren't meant to go, but that's the beauty of it. This story and this outcome is open to constant speculation. I may have just attempted to explain everything that happens and thus defeated the exact purpose the film is set up to do, and that is to confuse the audience completely and let them try and figure it all out. But have I really gotten this all right? Is there a right answer? And and was there a more important detail of all of these events that was right under my nose which I could have missed? Maybe. Maybe there was. That's the genius of 12 Monkeys. How could I ever know for sure that I truly understand this mind of a film? I don't think the writers wrote this to ever be understood. That's why 12 Monkeys is a masterpiece of the sci-fi mystery genre. The Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is a rather extended post credit scene because I want to explain more backstory to this film as well as my YouTube channel. So the reason why I did this video is because it's a really special full circle moment for me on this YouTube channel. My first ever video, which was actually a school project for my media studies class in year 10, was about Terry Gilliam and his directional style. The video sucked because it was my first video, but the awesome thing for me is that even today, I am still fascinated in his work. He didn't actually write 12 Monkeys, it was written by the obviously brilliant minds of Chris Marker and also David and Jeanette Peoples. And it was actually inspired by the film La Jete, which uses still images to tell the story about the past, present, future, and after effects of World War III, as well as the life of a slave who travels in time to find a solution to the world's destiny. An idea like 12 Monkeys that's inspired by another brilliant idea like La Jete also inspired Gilliam to sign on, of course, and in turn appealed to his directional style. Gilliam loves painting a confusing picture through his films and his desire to make the audience constantly second guessing, confused and just a complete mess by the end of the film is what makes him such a great filmmaker. You leave the theatre still constantly thinking about the movie. Gilliam loves taking his audience on a roller coaster ride and this directional style appealed to me so much that I chose him for my assignment on auteur directors in year 10. This also in turn ended up being a video about him and the first ever topic for Sam's movies which acted as a teaser short for me later doing movie reviews. So yeah, this is an awesome full circle moment for me and it's honestly a privilege to discuss such a wonderful nuanced film. I hope this channel has been its own rollercoaster ride of unusual and different content over the years. This is not my last video ever, although it's an awesome full loop and what better a story and film to discuss as a massive coincidence to this channel's history and my history doing videos here on Sam's Movies. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on Halloween in a very special video for Octoween 8. Peace.